dominance attracts the highest quality mates. I know in a video we did, I think last week, you were talking about how you like to be dominated by the man in your life. Mm -hmm. Can you elaborate on that? Why is um, that? I like Why when... choose a dominant guy versus some soy boy beta male who's indecisive and unsure of himself, like the Harry Honda type who's a really good guy, but he's too afraid to stand up to you? I like when the guy knows what he wants, and I think it goes vice versa. A guy likes a girl who knows what she wants, and... What do you mean by knows what he wants? In life, you know, you know what you want to do, what you want to be who you, who you want to be and who you don't want to be with so don't put up with things just because you know you're infatuated with a woman or a guy in my case like just because um I have feeling like I'm like in love with a person I still want to stand my ground you know if there's things I don't like I'm gonna speak on it I'm not going to change my ways just just to impress the guy. So I would like that to be reciprocated in a man, you know. If he doesn't like a girl who, uh, I don't know, just sits around all day and watches movies and eats chocolate, a.k.a. me, but <laughs> I still go and work out, you know. He's gonna, he's gonna, you know, you can, he's gonna speak up on it, like, hey, look, mm. like, I don't really like a sloppy girl that doesn't do anything, mm. instead of just letting me be who I'm being, you know. So, in other words, you want a guy that calls you out, that's dominance to you. Yeah, speak up, like. If talk he's to not me. satisfied with things in his kingdom, he lets his fair maidens know. Yep. What do you think of that? Yeah, because if I feel like I can walk all over him, then there's no fun in that, you know. There's no excitement in the relationship. I feel like I can do anything I want, and he's going to let me do it. Mm -hmm. You want to be put in your place? Yeah, put each other in our, our places. Call each other out, hold each other accountable. Yeah, like push mm -hmm. each other, like motivate each other. Don't slum it down. Slum it down? Yeah, don't <laughs> slum it down. <laughs> what do you think? Well, I'd say for me... More or less the same thing you're saying and the whole idea of, like I've always mentioned in previous videos, someone that, po someone that poses a challenge. And in that case, you know, holding each other accountable, being straightforward with what you want. Um, nobody likes someone who doesn't s speak up for themselves or whatever. It only makes things even more boring and makes things even more complicated and it's better to just say what you want, communicate what you want, and then find some common ground. You know, it can't always be, like, one-sided. So. Well, I always like to use the example, if you look at, and we talk about alpha males a lot, and, I, you know, I get, a lot of people get upset and butthurt when I, they'll say, oh, there's no such thing as an alpha male, Corey, and, and they get mad and they get butthurt. And the reason they get butthurt is because they're weak because they don't feel they're alpha in, enough inside. And so we tend to attack in other people what they're connected to within themselves that we're disconnected from. So if somebody's displaying dominance and being a leader, somebody that takes charge, or like a Tom Brady that walks out in the field and he commands the huddle, he commands respect, and the team believes more in themselves because he's gotten them – to come from behind so many times in his career that if they just take care of their own job, like one of the things that Coach Belichick always says is do your job. And what he says is what's implied in doing your job is to do it well. And so when your quarterback comes onto the field, your leader comes out of the field and somebody's out of a receiver's out of position or one of the guys is not lined up properly on the line. He's going to yell at them. He's going to call them out and tell them where they need to be and what they need to do. In other words, he's the leader. He's displaying dominance versus somebody, like you said, that's just passive, waits to be told what to do. You're going to tell them to get up at a certain time. You're going to be at a certain place. They're not really like self-motivated. Yeah. And like as an employer, you know, because I've hired and fired hundreds of people at this point in my career and 
you got basically two types of people in the world. You got people that are self-motivated, self-reliant, and you can give them a task and they'll just figure out a way to do it. And then you got the other people that got to kind of be led around by the nose and pushed and you try to motivate them and control them to get them to do the things that you want. They're not actively taking a role in helping themselves because you got to participate in your own rescue. If your life isn't the way you want it to be, it's up to you to do something about it. And I often talk a lot in my normal video newsletters about socialism and because I see people in the comments, especially younger people that think socialism or communism is a, a great idea and they get upset about it because if you depend upon the government or someone or something outside of yourself to solve your problems, to pay your bills, to make society fair or to mandate uh, a higher hourly wage, you've now given away all your power. You can no longer shape and change your destiny because now you're waiting for somebody else to do it for you or to give you a tax break or to are force you, the people you're working for to pay more. Are you talking about unemployment money? I'm talking about people that depend on the government. They want the government to fix everything. Yeah. So instead of looking at themselves, like like prime example was like AOC. You know who that is? Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez, the, the congresswoman from New York. Nope. So <laughs> she she got elected a couple of years ago, I don't know, three years ago, I think at this point. She's kind of a leftist. She was working at a, at a bar that wasn't doing very well. And she's a really beautiful woman, and she's not a dummy. And instead of just looking around and going, you know, this place that I'm working at is there's just not enough customers coming in here, or the average d dinner check or drink check is not very high because you basically get 20% in tips on what you serve, whether it's food or, or drinks, instead of her looking at it and going, you know what, this place is not doing well, let me go across town to a really nice steakhouse where the average dinner check is maybe four or 500 bucks, you get a little more upscale kind of clientele that comes in there, they can afford the nicer, finer things in life. And if you're waiting tables or serving drinks, it's really the same amount of work, the same amount of effort. So somebody like her, instead of looking around going, you know what, this place sucks, I'm just going to get my, myself a job at a place that's got a, that'll pay me more or I can earn more because the dinner check is bigger. She looks around and goes, oh, well, the government needs to do something about this because this bar that I'm working at is not paying me enough. And it's just too many people have that attitude that, you know, because maybe they don't feel comfortable sending out their resume or going and doing interviews, they want to sit back and point the finger because it's easier to be passive. It's easier to do nothing to help yourself versus picking up the phone and calling people and asking them if they're hiring and or going to different 10 different places in a day and handing out your resume and dressing up nice, shaking people's hands, getting to know who's doing the hiring and firing at the places and going around and trying to find a job to better your situation. In other words, being self-reliant. I mean, that was the whole reason why the United States of America was founded. So people could be self-reliant. You rise and fall based upon your own merits. And so people that like the idea of socialism or communism, they say, oh, it's not my fault that I'm broke or it's not my fault that my reserve of knowledge is not that great. It's not my fault that I haven't developed my gifts and my skills and my talents. It's somebody else's responsibility. And so they would sit around, they wait for an opportunity to come drop in their lap. Or like when, when I was going, when I was in school or anytime I was working for other people when I was younger, if, if I hit like the glass ceiling, so to speak, or I felt like I kind of learned everything I could learn from the company I was I was working at, I was I got bored. And I didn't like going into work not being excited about what I was going to do that day. And so when I started, when I noticed I started having a hard time getting up in the morning and going to work because I wasn't excited about it anymore, then I knew it was time to make a change because I, I, I wanted to feel, because one of our six human needs is growth. We've got to grow spiritually. got to feel like we're expanding and growing. And for me personally, when I didn't feel like I was or wasn't growing fast enough, I was looking for the next opportunity, the next company where I could go work Maybe they had a, a different type of job. Like when I was in the construction industry, I worked for my first general contractor was a real small company. And then after that, I worked for like a medium sized company that was doing multi, multi million dollar jobs. And then ultimately going to work for the largest builder in the world, 
working on a $160, $170 million two-year-long project at, at Disney World where you're dealing with the nicest, finest materials from all over the world. And some really sharp people like the Disney Imagineering people, really smart, capable, competent people that were passionate uh, about what they were doing. And I took ownership of that. I decided that I wasn't satisfied with where I was at. And it was up to me to do something about it. But there's just way too many people who are passive and they wait for the government to, to do something about it. You know, Instead of going and finding yourself a job that pays you more or learning or cracking open a book and trying to grow your reserve of knowledge because after, after all, you get paid based on the value that you bring to the marketplace. And if you want to earn more, you got to become a more valuable employee or if you have a company, you got your company's got to innovate. You've got to offer products and services that your competition really can't compete against. And so it's up to you to fill in the blank. It's up to you to go back to school or to read books or to recognize that you've kind of gone as far as you can at a particular job and then line something up. Because as soon as you say it's not my fault, as soon as you say, well, it's not fair, that, you know, I'm making $10 an hour and I'll be doing a lot better if they mandate $15 an hour and waiting for bunch of lion ass politicians to change the laws so you can get a pay raise and then there's lots of companies where they they've had this experiment where they in the different cities they raise the minimum wage and they think hey great now i'm going to get 15 dollars an hour and then the company goes well we can't really afford that so we're going to re replace you with a robotic kiosk and so people can just oh my touch gosh. the screen and order and now your job gets eliminated <clears throat> so now you're waiting for the government to mandate higher pay the government mandates higher pay and the entrepreneur in an effort to steer the company, an effort to stay in business and stay competitive with their competition, says, hey, well, we can replace these sourly people yeah. with a computer. It, that's crazy because I remember when it, that started happening because I used to work at Home Depot. And that's a whole different story. Like I started feeling that way that I wasn't happy going there and I would really just finesse the system at one point and finesse the system. um how did you finesse the system at home depot that i'm not gonna speak a, yeah speak about. i'm not gonna disclose that no. on the podcast today. um but i did notice working there that so many of the self-checkouts started coming out in like the, the kiosk you're talking about and it was like we didn't have any regular you know like the workers there checking checking it out for you anymore. Mm -hmm. I was like, this is really crazy. Like, yeah. we don't need people anymore. They can do it themselves. Yeah, everybody. Yeah. yeah. Even if we have that kind of technology, they also still have like the traditional old fashioned like kiosk because, you know, in our, our generation we're able to handle all that. But what about the older generation, yeah. like the old people? But if you ever go to like, tar is it tar like, yeah, like Target or Walmart? Walmart, there's always like maybe two. Yeah. With with the actual checkout person mm -hmm. there. The rest, it's like you're on your own. And that self one, I mean, not the self one, the one with the actual worker, you'll mm -hmm. see a long line. Like, it's so long. You're like, oh, my gosh, why aren't there more workers? But they don't want to waste their money on workers when you can just self-check it out. Well, the interesting thing about dominance in pecking order is the high achiever, the alpha male, the quarterback, and case of your boyfriend the leader if you're able to ascend to that role in in your own business or work for somebody else where you're in a leadership position that shows that you're competent and obviously as a woman you want a man who's competent in other words if he needs to earn more money he's going to figure it out he's going to go find somebody if he doesn't feel like he's getting the deal he deserves where he's at and he's tried to advance, and they're just like, well, we got nothing open, and they won't give him a raise. Well, we gave you a 3% at the beginning of the year. He's going to go, if he's competent, he's going to be like, screw this. I'm going to go find a job that's going to pay me more. He'll keep working the job he's got, but once he gets something lined up that pays him what he wants and what he feels he's worth, then he'll put in his two-week notice and leave. And that's where the difference is. Like I had a phone session recently with a client, and he went through some mental health issues. And it wasn't until his wife basically left him and he, you know, got through a six, eight month pity party that he finally got serious about getting his medication straightened out and doing something about it. But from her perspective, it's like she had given up her, her home, her career, her country, everything to move to where this guy lived. 
And then he went through a difficult time and he just, in essence, really didn't do much to help himself. He just assumed, hey, we're married. She's not going anywhere. We got a 30-year mortgage. She'll stick around no matter what. And But the bottom line is that he didn't do anything for mm-hmm. months and months and months. And it wasn't until she actually left him that then he was willing to participate in his own rescue. And you can imagine, I mean, she didn't trust his masculine core anymore because he, he, when they got married and when they got together, he was competent. And then he became incompetent due to his own, his own actions, admittedly so. And so she married a guy that was competent, that could pay the bills and she could relax and live her life to where he was no longer doing those things. And then they got under financial pressure and that forces the woman to move into her masculine because, you know, she went from relying on him. She'd given up everything to start a family with him. And then he just basically voluntarily became incompetent. And so she gave him a period of time and she asked him to do something about it. And he just, he kept feeling sorry for himself, kept making excuses. And it wasn't until she left that he actually... Because obviously now he's experiencing pain because he doesn't want to lose his marriage. Now he actually starts doing something to help himself. And so that's the the difference between a beta who will sit and complain that he's not getting, you know, he's waiting for the government to raise minimum wage. I got got to earn a living wage. It's like if if you're going to be a self-reliant individual, human being, then it's up to you to fill in your reserve of knowledge or grow your reserve of knowledge. And it's also up to you to develop your gifts, your skills, and your talents because you get paid, like I said earlier, based upon the value that you bring to the marketplace. And if you're not satisfied with what you're getting paid, you got to raise your value proposition. You got to learn more and you got to become better. You got to become more competent. You have to develop your gifts, your skills, your talents. And it takes time and repetition to do that. And there's too, way too many people in the world or just passive. As soon as you say it's not my fault, as soon as you point to the government or your employers being a big meanie and they won't give you the raise that you feel you deserve, self reliant people are just like, I'll go find a, a job in my spare time. And I, it was always, for me, it was always very satisfying when I wasn't able to get what I wanted working for other people. And they just figured I was going to sit there and take that shit. And then I would go send my resume out. It might take me a couple months, but. I'd find another company that was willing to give me the things that I wanted. And then I would go put in my notice. And then they all, well, I'll pay you more. I'll do this. I was like, mm-hmm. well, you weren't willing to do that a couple months ago. Mm-hmm. And you were practically like, taking you for granted. Yeah. Without even realizing it. Well, for some people, sometimes it could be like that. The strongest negotiating yeah. position is being able to walk away and mean it. And it's mm-hmm. like you give them every opportunity to meet your needs, mm-hmm. whether it's in business or your customers, or your employer, or somebody you're in an intimate relationship with. And it's like they either deliver or they don't, like in this case, the, the client who's, whose wife left him. Yeah. And she could only do so much, you know, like in a, in a relationship. Me personally, based on past relationships I've had, I've always felt like I would put in the effort, but you can only do so much, you know. We're both adults. You, you have to... Participate in your own rescue. Yeah, you have to. You could be there to support the person, but they can't just like sacrifice their life to, you know, for you. You have to put some effort on your own, you know, in your own terms as well. You start getting lazy and things aren't like that magic isn't really there anymore. Yeah. So in relationships and work, all of that. I understand like the pressure isn't like the best or like you have like that kind of pressure is not the best, but that's why you kind of take it a little bit at a time. As long as you're making some some kind of progress, I mean that's what matters. Yeah. Success is making progress. You got to feel yeah. like you're making some kind of progress towards your ultimate goal. Otherwise, you start to lose hope. Yeah, it's literally something that can't be that can't be done overnight. It does take time. It's just as long as you keep moving, you're good. You're solid. Just don't give up. It's a cliche, but it's so true Mm because most people, they run into one or two failures and, you know, say they're trying to change jobs and they go to two or three places. Oh, we're not hiring. Sorry. No, I don't have the experience. They're like, well, nobody's hiring. And they just give up because they don't like being told no. Mm -hmm. Or a guy that's asking women out 
and you get shot down once or twice. Like I've, I've done phone sessions with guys like that or I'll get emails from them. And like, nobody wants to date me. And it's like, well, how many women you asked out in the past year? One, two. It's like, mm-hmm. need more prospects, dude. I mean, it's easier said than done. Rejection really does suck, but you have to keep trying. I get it, something. though. Like, when people uh, give up when they're trying to apply for a job and they're like, oh, you don't have enough experience. It's like, how am I going to get experience yeah, exactly. if you're not hiring me? Like, after a while, when they keep saying the same thing, it's like, well, I'm never going to get this experience. No, and those same, like, jobs are asking for, like, five years of experience and they're, like, entry-level jobs. Yeah. It's, it's some weird crap like that. Like, you're going to school for it. That's the experience you're yeah. gaining. Yeah. Other than that, like, what else? You have to find somebody that's willing to give you or willing to give somebody an opportunity. Yeah where they don't have the experience so they'll train not you know not every employer is willing to do that but yeah. you know if you seek you'll find that's whether it's asking somebody out or applying for a job or trying to get an investor to invest in your startup you got to talk to enough prospects you got to get through the no's in order to get to the yeses yeah. that's what happened with me like a few months back i applied to other jobs and um the tv station that i work at right now i actually my professor sent the referral to them and because he used to work at that TV station as well. So I was able to get a call from them, a call from them the next day because of that it's not really, honestly, it's not easy. If you, even it, for an entry level job, like it, it's, it's crazy. And then there was another job that I had the interview like a few months back that luckily they did call me back and stuff, but it, it really does depend also on the people, you know, as well. Mm-hmm. So is that what, you know, it's who, you know, yeah. Networking. Yeah. What if you move to a brand new city at the end of the day? It's up to you. Nobody yeah. cares about your problems. Mm-hmm. Nobody cares yeah. about my problems. And they're glad we all have them. I mean, at the end of the day, you're complaining about your problems or feeling sorry for yourself ain't, ain't going to fix anything. You, yeah. have, you have to do something yourself. Again, you got to participate in your own rescue. 